Tricky meat. Hello. What the hell is that? Oh my god. Yeah, made me guys, made me, come on, take it to the max, let's do some 5 minute chess, play pure 5 minute, the way uh, the world created it, and uh, let's do it, let's do it, um, oh, wait a second, what did I just do, I did something wrong there, one second, and, uh, and, Mm hmm yeah better much better right okay so uh let's uh do the five minute tango uh okay today obviously we have to pay tribute to the u.s championship and the norway open the big the norway uh international the Stavanger tournament uh where uh, lots of interesting things are happening uh if you guys don't know we have first of all a lady that's uh winning the u.s championship coming very close and uh tatev uh abrahamian has a good chance to upset arena crush um and of course we have uh uh magnus carlson doing quite well in norway as usual okay here we have the special london devised by me against international master sokol okay i don't know this move h6 what it has to do with reality, I don't understand. Uh, okay, well, interesting. Okay, I'm gonna go bishop e3, kind of hoping for knight g4. I don't mind knight g4, I'm gonna go bishop c1 if that happens. Okay, and then I'm, okay, this h6, g5 cannot be recommended for black. Um, okay, but I have to be a bit serious here. How should I deal with this? Should I play h4 and on g4? Hmm, queen d2. Okay, let's let's throw an h4. Can't be too bad. Okay, and let's try to finish development with queen d2 and at some point f3. I think this is a bit weakening for black it's not really getting much for it on e5 i think i can play d5 uh, because if black walks into d4 i can just grab that happily happily okay now i will retreat uh, i will retreat to play f3 next Okay, black, I have to say black has something for it, but it has to be seen what exactly it is that he thinks he has for this pawn. Okay, I'm so, certainly going to try to exchange off some pieces. Okay, here I can take on c6 and take on d6. How bad could that be? <sighs> All right, I'll play the 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 other the other move that makes sense. I'll just play King B one, reserving the idea of taking on C six. Can also take on G four. Okay, I have a little bit of a problem in developing my pieces, but I am a pawn up for that. That's Black's job to prove he has enough. Actually, I don't think he 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 has, by the way. Does Black have enough? We'll have to see about that. <clears throat> Black tries things like knight d7. 
it's still not clear that I can't just take on g4 for example or even c6 and then d6 okay this one I can take with a knight and now I wanted to play this move here queen b5 to force this queen away from an active square if it goes to d8, I'll be happy. Then I can play bishop c4. Yeah. And that's my idea. Then on a6, I can play queen b3. And I'm threatening to take the knight. And play bishop takes bishop. And then all my pieces are finally doing what they need to be doing, which is developing, basically. This kind of development, just to say the ideas of how to position your pieces, they're very important for blitz. You kind of have to look for these little possibilities in developing your pieces. This is how you win games uh, of this nature, is you actually look for uh, the correct repositioning of your pieces. Okay, this is a cool move, uh, trying to play knight c5 and to play b5. Should I play knight f4? Knight f4 is possible. What if black plays b5? Then I'm in trouble, right? Hmm. So it looks like I should be playing. knight f4 in fact and now knight takes bishop <coughs> okay now i can make a good queen move solid queen move now black will play b5 maybe i should play queen e3 Okay, queen e3 it is. Okay. And, okay, now I can play e5. And that actually gives me a nice position. I'm going to play e5. I'm going into a pawn up ending. This is the pawn I had in mind, by the way. And now black has no counterplay, maybe. Uh, well, maybe he does. Let's see. Actually, 94. There was a chance with 94. This is a little bit different because now... How is this position? Okay, I don't have to rush to take the pawn on b2. I can attack the pawn on e5. And this should be strategically quite bad for black okay this one i take oh man that's not good okay now i better take some pawns okay and now i'm still doing well but i think black had to take on g4 beforehand okay now ho 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 this is interesting um should I play g5 or take? Or maybe I should just take, make it simple. And take. Yeah, this should be good. Should be winning somehow. Okay. Threatening rook g5 check. And now, very important to cut away at black's pieces. This should be losing. 
Why did I go? Why didn't I go to a four? <laughs> Crazy why I'm playing like that. All right, anyway, should be winning still. Very important to protect that pawn. And now it should be winning. And very important to kick that king away. All right. Well, this is your typical bridge building at work. <laughs> and let's move the rook away. And let's move our, our pieces in. And let's check. And just as long as we don't get made it in here somewhere, we should be okay. All right, well, that was a, an interesting five minute uh, game and an ending too. And uh, uh, somehow Black didn't uh, make up, make all his chances come true. I, th I think he had some chances there to survive. Okay, H6 is not necessary, but fine, I did it. Time to develop. Okay, well, um, let me take with the knight if I can. For that I have to move my piece away. Let's just quickly equalize first. First off, let's equalize. See how easy it is to equalize. If you don't want much in the opening, you can just exchange everything and then hope for the best. My general principle is to equalize first unless I need to win for some very, very special reason, okay? Okay, here I am, B6. White still has to be quite exact to, uh, Okay, now he wants to play d4. So I'm going to put my rook on c8 so that on d4 I can put my knight on c3. Uh huh. Fine. Now, if I attack the pawn. Let's say attack the pawn from here. Threatening bishop takes pawn. And then from here, threatening knight takes pawn. Okay. Now d4 is definitely in there. So now I'm moving my knight away. And here I thought I can take and basically have an extra, a possible outside pass pawn on a5 one day. Okay. Interesting concept let me put the knight on b5 so it can go to c3 at times which is a nice square I think and then slowly improve my other pieces maybe not so slowly okay now this actually 
has the idea of moving the knight to c4, right? Okay, that's fine. So I'll be looking to play e4 at some point to undo that knight on c4, e4, okay let's first improve our king, okay e4, d4, let's improve it some more, okay now e4 I think is timely. White kind of waited just until I'm ready. Uh huh. Now knight takes b6 as a threat, so time to move my knight. And threat knight takes bishop, and then, okay, I can play bishop g6 now, bishop g8 now to improve my knight a little bit. You see, somehow white's position isn't that great. It's a good move though. Now knight d5, knight b5. And then knight takes b4. Okay, well it's possible actually. I'm gonna try it out. Knight takes e3 is another possibility. Knight takes b4, knight takes e3. Okay, let's take this one first. Okay. Takes. And let's say knight d5 or. Okay, let's let's improve our bishop first and stop knight c h check obviously at the same time. <coughs> okay, and let's threaten Okay, that one has to be prote protected. Obviously. Okay, to read bishops, I think that's fine. The outside pass pawn should be something. Maybe it doesn't. Okay, let's continue I'm getting some weaknesses out of white's position. Mm -hmm. Now the question is where can I move in? Uh huh. Black is going to white's going to g3. Okay, I can certainly try to move my knight around. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okie dokie. Uh-huh. Now let's see. How can I improve this position? Okay, well maybe white's helping me by moving the bishop off that b5 square. Maybe this is how I'm going to do it. Interesting. Uh huh. Okay. Certainly. Very complicated ending. Okay. 
try to break in with b5 here. I don't have to take yet. And now what? Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah. Not quite clear how I'm going to win this. Let's try. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Ah. Yeah, I don't see how I'm going to win this. Unfortunately, I don't see how I'm going to win this. Well, maybe now. Nope, 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 nope. Not enough time. Simply not enough time to win games like this. When my opponents begin to pre-move, I have no chances. I guess it's hard to explain and move at the same time while not listening to the click and clock. But that's okay. I definitely tortured my opponent quite a bit there. And all that from a quite an even looking position, right? So that just goes to show you how sometimes meaningless looking advantages can actually be quite meaningful in a protracted kind of end game. And what I was doing there is I was trying to create some sort of a long term advantage, which I think I managed to create eventually uh, when I got an outside pass pawn basically. Now here I didn't have to allow that by the way, but I, I, I didn't think it was a bad idea to try to win an end game like that where my B pawn is certainly going to be better than the D pawn because it's outside. Okay, objectively, maybe somewhere here I could have played B5, but I didn't like King C3. Um, and in any case, white will always retain some drawing chances. And this end game was also quite drawish, especially since I had to give up this B pawn because I can't do too many things at the same time here and here really there was no way to force a win of a pawn until finally white just uh, gave it up by forgetting to protect it pretty much and here he under defended it and then of course I was pre-moving most of the time here so it was hard to actually get everything going He's, especially when he started checking it let's check on <coughs> g6 which i didn't want to see happen killed the rest of my time and we finally ended up drawing because i ran out of time and i did not have mating material that's okay that's normal stuff and uh let's see who is going to be next uh, in this uh, matchup meanwhile as i was saying fabiana corana is now leading the u.s championship i believe um and uh, he has a great uh, chance to win it. Okay, uh, a bit mismatched here. 2009, my opponent's rating. Let's see how this works out. Okay, certainly my opponent's playing very interesting simple chess developing his pieces i'm also going to just take control of the center and enjoy it while i can okay let's stop moves like b5 going forward and make our inroads 
for an excellent spot on the center. Okay, bishop g5. Okay, the bishop should be nice pointing at all these weaknesses on e5, on f6. This is a very welcome sight, of course. Whenever my opponent's play moves like g5, I'm very happy because obviously it's going to be hard to uh, actually here I think already there's a, a combination of sorts knight takes c5 pawn takes c5 pawn takes c5 and uh, it looks pretty bad for black I think um, okay let's see where we are okay, I'm going to play it I don't really see what black has in store for me on that so i'm just going to go for this little combination petit petit combination as capablanca would call it small combination it's a two mover it threatens e6 to win another piece or maybe even the queen and of course i already have two two pawns for the um knight and it all goes to show you that black should not be really um, positioning like this. Um, and of course it's hard for black to find the move, but the problem is that, okay, knight h5, I can take on g4 with check, and on knight g7, I play e6. Again, hitting the queen, which, by the way, doesn't have too many squares to go to, or any squares to speak of, and black will be lost. Well, that's exactly what black chooses, and this position is pretty, pretty dismaying for black here. The queen is trapped, and uh, even moves like knight e5 are not going to save it, because after bishop takes knight, I'm also threatening to... Uh, well, actually, this is an interesting move. Here, actually, black can save the queen uh, by going knight d6 or bishop d6. So that's fine. I'll let him do it. I'll let him go rook d6 or bishop d6. But at the end of it, black is still not saving himself. <laughs> yeah, let's take that one. And let's take this one to open up the king a little bit more. <coughs> Check. And this move should be the end of the game. I'm going to be winning the knight and I'll be up an exchange and two points. Yeah, that is the end of the game. I was right in calling that. Let's see who we get now. What kind of competition we're gonna get? Okay, here what happened was quite quite bad. As you can see, black does first surrender the center. Right now, white center is my center is under my control, which of course I take to solidify, and a4. That's just so black doesn't even come out from the queen side with b5. Now I move my knight so that my bishop can move out as well to a3 and eventually c4. My knight after a5 has a beautiful square on c4. Very hard to get the slash that knight. And now my bishop goes to g5. And black gets really upset at this bishop and starts weakening himself. But now e5 is hanging. And protecting e5 is a huge problem for black. I don't even know how that's going to be, how black was going to go about that actually. Uh, even knight h5, I think knight takes pawn. Knight takes e5, knight takes g3, knight takes d7, was winning. Black plays g4, but then, as you saw, I just started taking off the center pawns. Okay, we have mat p. And we have a king's indian, I guess. Of some sort. Uh-huh. Black is... White is taking it easy. That's fine. As long as I 
squares to develop to. I'm doing fine. Okay, let's bring the rook out. Uh-huh. Okay, let's open up my bishop. Can I play d5? Oh, not yet. Not yet, yeah. So let's prepare d5 by playing knight c7. Alrighty. What makes sense here? <laughs> hmm. I'm not sure I like the way I played this. Okay, for now, let me get rid of this knight on c7, which is not doing much. Yeah, let's get rid of that one. And let's get our queen into an active position. Aha, uh -huh, that's nice. I can do that. It can take these bishops all day long. Okay, now I have to stop f5, of course. So I'll play f5 myself. Now a very strong bishop, dark squared bishop. Okay. Now black obviously wants to double on the e file. So I should prepare the defense for that. Get my queen active. Ooh. Okay, bishop h6 is looking nice on e6, bishop takes f4, pawn takes bishop, rook, no, that's not good. Okay, let's take this one. And just block it. Thank God I stopped d4. Okay. And let's attack the c4 pawn, threatening rook take bishop takes c4. Okay, that was that remained to be that was ignored by my opponent. Let's see why. I don't think it was so smart to ignore it. Okay, now I can move my bishop back and threaten queen takes h3, meanwhile. Aha, uh -huh, that was defended, but now bishop takes g2 check, queen takes d4. Okay, true enough. And now, probably... Well, rook e7, just to start off, just to see where the knight is going. Not to necessarily take it yet, but just to kind of feel out where that knight is going from b7. Okay, okay, just checking. It's not going anywhere. is going to c5 that's where it's going actually that's pretty cool <laughs> let's attack the knight after all A little bit complicated descend descending. This is not as simple as I thought it would be. I think maybe I got a little cocky here. 
for example, 98, I think, gives White some chances here still. Yeah. Uh, now knight c5, huh? Interesting. Okay, I think I have to save my c pawn. I think it's an important pawn. I'm going to try to save it. Okay, now bishop f8, have bishop f6 to try to win that pawn back. And push my. Okay, let's attack the rook and let's move away. Okay, and now let's go let's go see pawn let's go see pawn again mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> that cough isn't the best what can you do okay now mm -hmm. Play h6 to play bishop g5 and d2 at some point. Uh huh. I can still play bishop g5 and eventually c2, right? Okay, time to go in. Threaten c2. Okay, now simply king f7. And I should be winning this position now. Well, then c2. Uh, this is block playing very quickly to impress me. I understand. I'm impressed. Doesn't mean it's not time to resign, right? Okay. So what happened there was uh, White played well in the opening, but then kind of lost his lost what he was going to do because I think here. Um, certainly he shouldn't give up the bishop he should play bishop g5 but he was probably worried about queen b6 but then on queen b6 maybe g4 aha uh -huh, we have alias again who got his rating up quite a bit in between these games so now he's actually worth beating <laughs> let's see if we can get that done aha uh -huh. all right gonna have to give up the bishop I guess I don't really mind so much uh-huh <clears throat> okay I'm not in a rush to castle because obviously white wants to take my knight on g6 and that would create some possibilities for my attack on the king side if that happened to be what happens so I'm preparing for white to take on g6 that's what I'm basically doing okay now maybe I'm even threatening to take on h2 I don't know a little crazy but okay here if white finally did it And I'm hitting h2 for real. Definitely. Wow. Well. Let's exchange bishops. I don't know if I could have taken on ch2 if it was worth it but let me do it this way active queen 
And actually now I know I'm threatening to take on h2. And on knight f3 I'll have a nice queen c3 check. Checking out where the king is going to f1 or whatever. Whatever it is that's going on. Wow. C5 should be punished somehow. It just feels wrong. Okay, I'm going to go knight e4 to take out this last good piece that white has, that knight. And yeah, I'm going to take this pawn here and take the d file over. White can't castle for now. But I'm already threatening to stop white from casting forever. With at least two different moves. Queen c3 check and rook takes h2. Okay, now queen c3 check should be quite strong. Followed by rook d8. Now I think just takes and rook d2. It's going to be quite strong. White's king should not be coming out anytime soon from that f1 situation. Let's see if white can survive this game. Probably the only chance is to keep pushing with the B and C points. He's doing it. Okay. Okay. My job is to take out the knight, the bishop on d3, on e2. Then white's position won't be so easy to play. I'm taking it out. <sighs> now in c7, there's always going to be king d7. Okay, that has to be done this way. Okay. Time to move my king into position. Okay. Uh -huh. White wants to play rook b1. That means I have to play rook b8 to play rook b2. Then if I can snipe a couple of pawns on the f file, fg pawns, whatever, then I can come back and take my c pawn. Okay, should I play rook b2? Or should I just play f5? Or should I just play rook b6? This looks right somehow. Uh huh. Well, I decided to defend. Okay, let's exchange rooks. Okay, and then just take this one. Take this nice pawn on c6. Okay, now I'm going to try to defend my goodies here. These are pretty good goodies. Okay, and now okay, let's let's bring my 
pawns in. Okay, and let's kick this king out far away. Okay, good question. Where to go now? Probably here. This looks right. And now we're going to check this king away so we can take with a pawn, not anybody else. And threatening rook takes f2 to really expedite matters here. Yeah, here we are. Well, yeah, this should be winning enough. I'm going to go for it. And okay, here we're going to take one pawn. That's quite important. Oh, I missed that move. Ay, ay, ay. I missed that move big time. Now we're going to have to redo this whole thing again. Ay, 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 ay. All right. This was bad. Clearly very bad. Just missed that whole idea. And now white is, I don't even know if white's not, if white's really losing here. It's not going to be easy to defend, but especially with 20 seconds left, but I really misplayed it big time, huh? All right, let's try to get in there. All right, this looks very good. And then we got the rook on B3. Well that was something huh that certainly gave my opponent a bit too many chances but if we go back we'll see what happened it was quite typical of someone playing passive so here white finally took but he didn't ever play g3 or h3 and he allowed me to exchange immediately one pair of bishops so really the advantage for white lies in the two bishops pair in the pair not just in one bishop because otherwise, really, it's a question of timing. And here, Black's timing is perfect. Look at him. First of all, I don't know why I didn't take on h2. I have no idea. What what tactic stopped me from taking on h2, I don't know. But certainly not knight f3. Uh, so this was kind of foolish. I just kept thinking of that my opponent will protect the opponent h2. I kind of thought he'll play h3. And anyway, knight e4. Now... The problem here is for white is that he can't castle kingside he has to prepare that finally he does but i check him so he can't castle anywhere now i say look let's trade rook let's take queens white doesn't really have a choice we trade and now my rook infiltrates first if black starts moving around like king e1 i'll play rook a2 and my knight rook my rook my other rook can come from h5 or and d5 or king e7 rook d8 so white decides the best thing to do is to push but then first i take out the bishop so that the white pawn on c6 is actually weak not strong and once the bishop's taken out the king positions are felt quite seriously white tries to improve his but next stage is maybe here rook b1 actually was a good move because when king takes c6 rook c1 check and who knows maybe white can somehow save himself but he didn't do it and went down in flames all right next case d c5 pretty zany stuff huh xenon xenon is playing in a z zany little way here all righty well, let's develop So far, so good. Everyone's happy. No way I'm letting black play b5, though. Okay, time to exchange dark squared bishops. Off they go. Off they go. Now let me take this guy. And um, which one should I allow? Should I just allow... And then pawn to b4 
or the pawn to c4. I don't even know. I want to allow both. So let's play b3. See which one comes. Okay, this one's coming. Now my knight's coming to c4. Okay, through e3 or through? I guess through c4. That one gets taken. All right, let's get in a rook. Active little rook here on a7. Probably black will try to get rid of it, I imagine. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay, he does get rid of it. Next one. It's going to be difficult, more difficult to get rid of. Okay, well, let's get our knight into somewhere good. Uh -huh. Black Knight is coming to b5. That should not be allowed. Okay, let's stop it. With knight e3. Not sure I have such a big advantage, by the way. Maybe just a very little one. But I definitely have an advantage. Okay, I'm going to try to play h4 and g3 here. Before black expands. Uh-huh. All right. Interesting. On root takes nine, there's bishop takes bishop. Okay, I'm going to play this so I can take with a pawn on c4 and not let that knight in at all. Okay. Alrighty. What a complicated position. Okay, now black is trying to play rook a8. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whew, how am I going to win this ever? Okay, better take that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is not good at all. Guys, help me. What did I do wrong? I'm getting killed here all of a sudden. Yeah. I'm not winning at all here. Well, this one is not so bad. I can actually defend this pawn here and go after the C pawn. Who knows what that will bring. Maybe some <clears throat> comic relief after all.
Wow, what a tough ending. Of course, black should not have traded queens. There's no reason to take out such a beautiful queen and exchange it. But now it's a real brutal fight. Okay. Okay, now I can play a four actually. Maybe I can improve my knight somehow first. Hmm. Okay. Can't actually take. Oh, he went too fast for it. He rushed. Now what? Wow, this is such a unnerving position. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting stuff. Okay. Now what? Aha! Uh -huh. Funny, funny. Phew! Oh God! What's going on in this position? Why am I so, so weirdly placed here? Oh, oh my God. Oh my god. Oh, did I win on? Oh my god, it was a draw. Oh my god, look at this. 108 moves were me able to do. Isn't this quite amazing? All right, well, let's see if we can finish this on a nice note. I am Tetrarch. Something in my mouse. Just I decided to die on me. Mm, very strange. Mouse, mouse, where are you? Why are you dead? Mm. That's too bad. Ay, ay, ay. Mm. Somehow my mouse just died on me, guys. Mm.
Let's see if I'm in time. To replace with another mouse. Wow. Batteries. Okay, and this one is tough to use. This is a really tough stuff. Okay. Wow. A mouse trap. A real mouse trap. Well, it's okay. We're playing five minutes. A couple of minutes didn't kill anyone yet. All right. E4. Knight C6. Let's see. So far, I'm developing nicely. I think in general, this position is about equal. And Bishop can now retire back to d6 to take control of some dark squares. King can move out. The rooks can move out. And the knight can move out here to d7 looking to see what's going to happen shouldn't be too bad i think the position is very equal and if black waits for his chances he can actually get them Okay, all my pieces are together. And I can start slowly improving now on the king side. Maybe h6, g5, put something on e5, like a knight or a bishop. Okay, here I could put the bishop on f4 maybe. Maybe put a knight on e5 or something like this. I'll just pawn on f6 for now. And bring the bishop back. No harm done. <coughs> okay. For now, nothing special, probably still very equal, but it's actually a little bit more difficult to play for white, as can be evidenced from the time consumption. If you remember, I actually got engaged in the mousetrap, so I actually didn't have that much time to spend. I was two minutes just changing the mouse, running throughout the house looking for one that works. And white's just been spending time figuring out what to do. Okay, f5 looks like a reasonable move to try to get a little bit more active here. Okay, takes. Yeah, probably an g6. Okay. Their four pawn may be a little bit weak. The only guy defending it is the king. If I can check him away, he'll have to drop the pawn. It's a bit of a nuisance, right? <laughs> I'll play king f6, rookie h check. On rook d1, I can play rook e8. Still threatening king f6 check. Okay, white decided that it's 
time to start thinking about that f point. Fine. Now I can play rook c8, but I'll maybe check first. Let's check this king away from. Aha, uh -huh, he wants to get active. That actually makes sense, okay. Okay, but then. Let's see where it's going. Okay, and I want to go attack the H pawn. That's an important pawn as well. And bishop a6, I think. Okay. Check. Okay, let's see how this works. B6. Then I can win a bishop. True enough. Okay, now I need to be exact. Okay, I'm gonna go after the A pawn because that's important. If I get rid of some of these guys, the counterplay won't be there. Well, in fact, my opponent believed me, and there it is. One for the good guys. Okay, I was happy to oblige. I was happy that even the mouse trap didn't get me i got the mouse a new mouse and won a nice simple game with it join me next week for bobbing for loogie this was grandmaster max loogie hope you enjoyed the show take care and good night bye everyone <laughs>